greetings in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ let us pray let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you o lord my rock and my redeemer one year has gone from us we have entered into a new year i am happy to greet you again in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ as we have entered into the new year let us thank god for keeping us safely one more year and we pray to god for the mercies and uh, blessings that we may experience in the new year for today's meditation the bible reading is from Joshua 1 1 to 9 Joshua 1 1 to 9 After the death of Moses the servant of the Lord the Lord spoke to Joshua son of Nun Moses Moses's assistant saying my servant Moses is dead now proceed to cross the Jordan you and all this people into the land that i am giving to them to the israelites every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon i have given to you as i promised to moses from the wilderness and the lebanon as far as the great river the river euphrates all the land of the hittites to the great sea in the west shall be your territory no one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life as i was with moses so i'll be with you i will not fail you or forsake you be strong and courageous for you shall put his people in possession of the land that i sought to their ancestors to give them only be strong and very courageous being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left so that you may be successful wherever you go this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that it is that is written in it for then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall be successful i hereby command you be strong and courageous do not be frightened or dismayed for the lord your god is with you wherever you go one of the encouraging books of the old testament is the book of joshua all of us need to know the power of faith so that we can be more conquerors joshua's life is a beautiful illustration of the power of faith joshua teaches us the key to victorious living the principles we may live by to be victorious in Christ the key principle is faith during the second 40 years of his life Joshua was a minister to Moses assisting leading in battle and observing the ways of the Lord. Now Joshua comes to the time of his appointment as a leader of the Israelites following Moses' death. In Moses was the anticipation of the promised land, but in Joshua the realization of it. Joshua can teach us how to conquer by faith. Joshua becoming the leader of the israelites i would like to discuss 
three points with regard to this portion. First one is the challenges of faith. Verse 2 says that my servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross Jordan, you and all the people into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Here, God set a challenge before Joshua. It is Moses didn't see the promised land. He passed away. And now the challenge is with Joshua. God commanded him to lead the people to the promised land. He had already seen God at work in other victorious experiences in Egypt, at the Red Sea, and against Ab Amalek. Joshua already knew what a kind of people was Israelites. Numbers 13 and 14 record the Kades Verna experiences and the bitter consequences of unbelief. So it was a great challenge to Joshua to lead this people who many times murmuring against God, who many times um, was showed their unbelief. To lead such a people is a great task. But Joshua, as a man of faith, is accepting God's command. Now God challenges Joshua to go into the land and possess it. Moses could not possess it, but now as a leader of the Israelites, Joshua is going to see the land and possess the land. We know that even so many people, only Joshua and Caleb could, those who started from Egypt and only those two could see the promised land. It is God's commission to Joshua. This is our challenge also for a victorious life in Jesus Christ. That is a great challenge. As we entered into a new year, we do not know what are the challenges we are going to face. But being a child of God or children of God, it is our responsibility like Joshua to challenge any kind of commands that God is giving to us. The second point is the assurance of faith. Verse 5 and 9 shows the assurance of faith. Verse 9, no one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. And nine, I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord our God is with you wherever you go. God not only really commands, He also assures the fulfillment of the promise. His promise, God's promises are always ever it is our responsibility to accept it. God's promises are promises of divine authority. If once God uh, demands, commands us to do something, the great assurance also behind that. All of God is behind His word. God's I will, I will do it for you or I'll be with you is the great assurance we are, we, have, we are receiving from our Almighty God. As God commands us to serve so that He obligates Himself to see us through. John 15, 16, Philippians 1, 6, all these things, all these verses show us that 
there is the promise of divine faithfulness in verse 5 and 9 verse 5 states that god's promise of his abiding presence i will be with you so do not be afraid do not be frightened or dismayed my presence will be always with you this is not just for joshua it is repeated elsewhere in the bible especially in hebrew 13:5 this is god's eternal principle made real through the ministry of the holy spirit in matthew chapter 28 the last verse also says that i will be with you till the end of the ages god not only commands to do the ministry but also god assures the everlasting presence this is a choice two times god assures joshua about his uh, assurance in verse 5 and verse 9 it is our for us also it is as we have entered into the new year it is the assurance that god gives us i'll be with you he is is not a god who gives us some commands or and stand and go away from us but our god is a god who fulfills the promises and who is who who is always with us wherever we may go and we know that god knows that we are human beings who are helpless who are uh, the nature of us god knows that is why throughout the bible he assures that the presence always will go with us he journeys with us our god is a god who journeys with us in the valley of death and also in the valley in the wherever we go so last year was uh, in my in our life in our family life an year full of so many incidents we have gone through the worst situation of worst circumstances of life and at the same time and the happiest occasions of life my husband reverend james thomas was in ventilator for 5 days and really he was sick nobody felt that he will come back to life but by god's grace and uh, by the prayer of too many he had come back to the life and still he is serving god in uh his with all the health and uh, and uh, how god was gracious before that i when we ask any questions how are you we may simply say by god's grace i am good i am fine but after uh, the my husband was in ventilator and after that he got the recovery and he is ministering our god after that i knew what a powerful words we are we cannot simply say by god's grace i am fine it is like an like an any other word it is using we are using but my dear bro- sisters and brothers with the confidence by god's grace i am good i am good we could say because by god's grace only we are here we are leading our life we are entering into new new phases of our life but the god's presence is always with us and the third one is the victory of faith it is again in some few verses it is in verse 2 itself we can see my servant moses is dead now proceed to cross the jordan you and all his people 
all this people into the land that I am giving to them to the Israelites so there also God is giving a statement that Joshua is going to be victorious that Joshua had the faith he believed in God and that is why when God commissioned Joshua even before Joshua has proved that he had faith in God here again Joshua is pro- proving is uh, proving that he had the strong faith in our Lord our God so in verse 2 Joshua is told to go over this Jordan in verse 5 he is assured that not any man would be able to stand before him nobody will stand before him nobody will be against because god is with him nothing could stop faith in action if we have the strong faith nobody can stop it nothing can stop it because our almighty god will be with us verse 10 records that joshua accept the challenge and moves out according to god's word verse 10 says that then joshua commanded the officers of the people pass through the camp and command the people prepare your provisions for in 3 days <coughs> you are to cross over the jordan to go into the into take possessions of the land that the lord your god gives you to possess so with all strength jesus is a uh, sort joshua is telling to the officers and the people move forward so god is giving you god is going to give you the promised land prepare your provisions for in 3 days you are to cross over jordan to go into the and to take the possessions of the land that the Lord your God gives you to possess in faith he could see that the people is going to possess the land which God the Yahweh had promised them verse 16 describes the people's response in obedience to God's command through Joshua through Joshua the victory is assured through Joshua God Joshua obeyed God's word and the rest of the book Joshua tells the story what is the secret of faith verse 7 and 8 only be strong and very courageous being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left so that you may be successful wherever you go obey the commands obey the laws that i have given through my servant Moses do not turn to the right hand or to the left because Uh, the lord is going to <clears throat> work on you and god is going to give you victory so verse 8 teaches that successful living is a uh, living by the principles of god's word if we obey the god's word we will be successful wherever we go if we obey the commandments we will be successful wherever we may go how faith in god obey the word of god that is what joshua teaches us it was god's purpose for joshua that if he was to be a leader there must be spiritual discipline into his life all of us should have especially the leaders should have a spiritual discipline in our life through the word of god there was also to be absolute obedience to the word of god word of god is the source of 
all our success if we are to experience god's secret to life we must get into god's word and meditate upon it allowing it to do its work in us how can we exercise the faith today so many challenges before us so many struggles before us so many so many things obstacles in our journey our life is a journey each of us are experience mixed with the sorrows worries and happiness and everything but the story of joshua tells us that god have a strong faith in our lord jesus christ our god and meditate the word of god and you will be victorious that is the story of joshua tells us you can believe that god will never leave you nor forsake you that is the promise of our our dear god you can believe that god has an answer for our problems your sufferings and our circumstances you can believe god's word and begin today reading it memorizing it and meditating on it let us believe in the promises of god the coming year we do not know what are the things happening to us but god is always with us like joshua each day each minute god is telling us do not be afraid or discouraged for i the lord your god am with you wherever you go amen